Russian forces have been pushing into Bakhmut for weeks, but Ukrainian resistance has prevented them from taking the city. Among those fighting on Kiev's side are four battalions from Chechnya. Chechnya. Ingushetia, Georgia, Chechnya, and finally Ukraine. We all know what happened in these lands. Now Ukrainian children, women and soldiers are dying every day in the name of their country's independence. This is what the Russian mir looks like. This is the price they pay for at the cost of their own lives. This is a high price for the so-called peaceful resolution of the conflict. Meanwhile, Kiev is close to completing preparations for Friday's Ukraine-EU summit. The EU is sympathetic to Ukraine's membership of the European Union. All of Ukraine and its partners are making every effort to ensure that Russia suffers a final defeat on the battlefield. Our goal is also for the occupying power to lose all hope of the possibility of a rematch and the desire for further attempts at aggression. Russia's defeat will make a lasting peace possible. Russia is preparing for a new offensive. To this end, Moscow is mobilizing more than 200,000 troops and importing weapons and ammunition by buying them in bulk from its partners. The Kremlin's criminal aggression against Ukraine, according to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, poses a threat to the security of the entire world. Beijing is watching closely and learning lessons that may influence its future decisions. What is happening in Europe today could happen in East Asia tomorrow. So we must remain united and firm, standing together for freedom and democracy. Meanwhile, the United States arms industry company General Atomics wants to donate two Reaper combat drones to Ukraine for the symbolic sum of one dollar. The Pentagon is also preparing a new military aid package worth more than two billion dollars. The United States is to transfer long-range missiles to Ukraine for the first time. Details will be announced later this week. <laughs> so that the Ukrainians could effectively cut the Karimian corridor, that is, the connection between mainland Russia and the occupied peninsula. In fact, the whole logic of the Ukrainian counteroffensive is that Russia's logistical routes are simply cut for several weeks before the mechanized columns enter. The United States is pursuing a measured policy not to escalate the war in Ukraine. Therefore, the government in Washington is restrained in transferring offensive weapons. President Joe Biden has refused to send F-16 aircraft to Kiev. Meanwhile, Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov believes that a final decision on the matter has not yet been made. France is sympathetic to Ukraine, but the final decision lies with the Americans. Our military doctrine is clear. There is no taboo on the delivery of aircraft to Ukraine. Minister Alexei Reznikov came here with a clear goal. We want to learn about the needs of the Ukrainian military, of which aviation is a part. France's decision was a leading one in terms of recent tank deliveries to Ukraine. It came through the transfer of RC AMX-10 light tanks. When Ukraine ousts the Russians from its territory, Kiev's priority will be to try Russian war criminals, Butcher, Borodjanka and Erpin are towns on which the Russian atrocities have been imprinted with exceptional brutality. An international scientific conference began today in Berlin. Experts discussed the establishment of a proper criminal tribunal to try the guilty. Today this has to be stopped, because here everyone understands perfectly well that this Russian imperialism and Russian bestiality has never been clearly judged, that the free world was unfortunately not interested in it. Today it is interested in the question of judgment, but it takes a weak interest. It has been almost a year since the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine began. Since then, Kiev has registered more than 34,000 crimes related to Russian aggression.